Okay, so we're going to go ahead and solve for the indicated variable. So here we have three equations we're going to practice. And in our first equation, we're going to solve for m. And our second equation, we're going to solve for x. And our third equation, we're going to solve for c. And uh, solving for, uh, for indicated variables in um, algebra is an area that a lot of students uh, struggle with um, sometimes, but it's absolutely critical that you can rewrite a formula or equation in terms of another variable. Okay, so we're going to practice this, and uh, you know this one is really easy. This one's a little more interesting, and this one has a little bit more of a twist as well. And uh, if you don't know, okay, this here is actually a physics formula. It stands for force equals mass times acceleration. This is a nice algebra formula. Okay, it's actually the slope intercept formula or equation y equals mx plus b. And you should hopefully be pretty familiar with that if you're studying algebra or any kind of mathematics uh, at the middle or high school level. And then here is our nice theory of relativity equals mc squared. And um, of course, that's from our um, awesome friend Albert Einstein, and we're going to be solving for C in this particular uh, uh, formula or equation. So um, again, uh, solving for variables in formulas or other e uh, equations is a critical skill, uh, and students sometimes, you know, get confused doing this. So hopefully these three problems will clear up any confusion, and we're going to get to these problems in just one second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabma Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But um, whether you need to take a full online math course, you can take uh, one of mine. I, think I offer complete comprehensive math courses. Or if you're taking a course and you're struggling with it and you need assistance, then I can help you as well. Okay, All my courses are uh, offer very detailed, comprehensive lessons, much more than what I do on YouTube. And I teach you how to solve the most common problems you're going to face in middle and high school math and even basic college math, literally thousands of problems. So uh, if you need some assistance okay, or need to take a math course, you can check out my program by just following that link in the description of the video. Now, if you are a math student, I must stress the importance of note-taking. It's absolutely critical that you take great notes. All right, My golden rule of math over decades of teaching it is those students who take uh, great math notes almost always uh, do uh, the best in, um, in my math classes. All right, And the reverse is true. Those students who are too busy to take math notes because they're talking to their friend or maybe they're just checking out their apps on their smartphone or maybe they're like, I could just kick back. I don't have to worry about it because my buddy over there has awesome math notes and then I'll take his math notes the night before the test and I'll read them and then I'll be good to go. Or, you know, maybe I just take math notes on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, just because those are my favorite days to take math notes. Well, listen, I've <laughs> made all those mistakes. Trust me, when I was a, uh, a young man, I was a terrible uh, student. And I can even remember my teachers back in the good old days tell me what I'm telling you. Of course, I went through one ear and out the other, and I paid a price for it. I don't want you to pay that price. So I'm telling you that if you want to do great in math, you got to have great math notes. But in the meantime, if you're not there yet, you need something to study from. So I actually offer detailed, comprehensive uh, math notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find a link in the description uh, of this video to those notes as well. All those links, again, are down there if you want to check this out. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to be talking about here is something that uh, would be taught or really has to be mastered at the basic algebra level. Okay, so obviously if you're in middle school math, if you haven't you know, uh, um, learned how to solve equations yet, then you know this video may, may be a little bit too advanced for you. But if you're taking algebra, then you know you definitely need to know how to do this. Now, before you can handle these problems, you need to be able to just solve basic equations like this. Okay, so here's a basic equation. You got to be able to know the steps to solve basic one-step, two-step, and multi-step equations. So, if you're not sure about 
your equation solving ability, okay, or maybe you haven't studied it yet, then uh, you could do uh, one or two things, right? A couple different options. You can go into my algebra and pre-algebra playlist. I have tons of videos on equations. Um, uh, so you can check that out and learn about how to solve equations. Or you can go into my algebra course, pre-algebra course, and learn how to solve equations. Or you can just wait until this uh, topic comes up in your math class. But it, to solve for a variable, uh, you can't do that. Uh, solve for a variable and equation or formula. You can't do that until you know how to solve equations. Okay, you got to be really, really good at this stuff. But let's just do a quick review. If I was to solve for x, right, my indicated variable here, there's only one, is x. Okay, I want to uh, um, write this equation or solve this equation for x. That means I want to write this where x is on the left-hand side and then whatever this number, my solution's on the right-hand side. That's what I mean to solve for it. But I could technically say write this equation in terms of x, okay, which means solve the equation for x. So here I would do what? I would subtract 1 from both sides of the equation like this. And then I would add down in my column uh, manner. I would be 2x plus nothing is 2x. So I'll write that here because positive 1 plus negative 1 is 0. And that's going to equal to uh, 7 plus a negative 1 or 7 minus 1 at 6. Now, to get my x by myself here, or by itself, excuse me, not by myself, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 2, and I get x is equal to 3. Okay, so here, what I'm talking about is you got to really understand all the detailed steps that we take to solve basic linear equations. Okay, um, so if you're not quite sure about that, this video might, you know, um, give you a little bit of issues. This, this topic tends to give uh, students uh, problems, but it's absolutely critical. You need to know this skill. You need to be able to write formulas and equations in terms of different variables, okay? It's an absolute must, all right, especially in algebra. All right, so again, prerequisites is really make sure you have your equation solving skills down. And now let's get into these problems, all right? Let's get into our first one. So here, we have f equals m times a, right? And I want to solve for m. In other words, I want to write this uh, formula or equation in terms of m. So it's going to be m uh, on one side. And then what other variables do I have? I have an a and an f. So a and f are going to be over here in some sort of combination, right? Uh, what combination? Well, we're going to talk about that here in just one microsecond. Okay, so how do you uh, approach this? Well, if I'm trying to solve for m, okay, here is my m, okay, right there in my formula. Now, what you want to do, okay, actually, let's put this guy right up here like this. We can see it a little bit better, is I'm only going to think of the m, what I'm solving for, as the variable. Okay, I'm going to think of these other variables as numbers. So you here you have to use your imagination, right? You got to be really good and you got to be thinking, hmm, I got to use my imagination. So I'm going to think of M as the variable only because I'm trying to solve for it. And F and my A here, okay, I'm going to think of these as just being some numeric value, right? So in my brain, that's what I'm going to be doing it. So let's just uh, think about this for uh, a quick second. So if M is a variable, okay, and I'm thinking of uh, F and A as some numbers, let's just make up some numbers real quick. So let's say 8 equals M times 2. Now, in algebra, we would put the 2 in front of the M, okay? In other words, I would this equation would look like M equal, 8 equals 2M, okay? Not m2, but we can kind of, it's technically these are the same thing. To solve for m, what do I do? I divide both sides of the equation by 2. Okay, so here I would divide both sides of the equation by 2, and then 8 divided by 2, 8 divided by 2 would be uh, my solution for m. Okay, well, we're going to be doing the exact same steps, but obviously, um, we're just going to be thinking of M as the variable. We're going to be treating F and A as uh, kind of numbers here, okay? So if you can kind of do that, all right, then you could do all these problems, all right? So conceptually, we kind of just have to have that discipline. All right, so if M 
is my only variable. To solve for it, if f is like a number and a is like a number, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by a. Okay, so f divided by a is equal to m, or rather m is equal to f divided by a, and that's it. Okay, so very, you know, simple. Of course, you know, it was literally took one step to do this, but I needed to kind of stress how we approach this mentally. And we're starting off with a nice, easy problem uh, to have this down. But if you understand this now, you know, like if you knew that this was the answer, but you didn't quite, you just kind of had this intuition on why that was the case. Well, now you know, right? You, I'm giving you kind of a solid way of thinking about this so you don't, you know, uh, make any errors on the more complicated problems. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our next problem. All right, so here we go. Y equals MX plus B, and we want to solve for X. All right, so let's write this here. Y equals MX plus B, and we're going to now um, uh, have to do more than just one step to get to X right here, okay? So if this is where uh, students will will struggle a bit and care like well what's what do i need to do first well if you're not quite sure just substitute in real quick some numbers here okay here actually let's keep this guy let's scoot this guy over here let's just make up some numbers for y now remember x is the only one i'm going to treat as a variable so let's just make up some numbers real quick in our our mind for y m and b to kind of better see what we're going to do so let's say y is eight Okay, so your y equals mx plus b. All right, so let's say y was 8 and m is 2, and then x, we have our x, right? We're keeping that as a variable because that's what we're solving for. Plus b, well, I don't know, let's make that a 1, okay? Now, again, y, m, and b, we're going to treat as numbers. So you can just substitute in numbers here like this, 8 equals 2x plus 1. So here, when students see this, okay, they're like, well, how do I do this problem? Remember, in a variable or an equation, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So if this kind of confuses you, just switch them around. Switches the side, switch the sides around so you see 2x plus 1 is equal to 8. Now, if I gave you this equation, this is like that one I just got done uh, solving. That's a basic uh, linear equation here. You need to know how to solve equations again to solve these, to be able to uh, write these uh, equations in terms of different variables. So you have to subtract 1 from both sides. I get 2x is equal to 7, and so x would be equal to 7 divided by 2. We have to understand the steps to solve this equation. So knowing that, I got to do the same steps with this, but instead of numbers, I got to kind of keep it in terms of the variables. All right? Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. And by the way, this is can be confusing for students, all right? All right, so the first thing I needed to do here was subtract this B value, which was 1, right? So I want to subtract B from both sides of the equation, like so. So now we have Y minus B. I'm going to write it this way, Y minus B. And I'm also going to put some parentheses around it for good order is equal to M times X. Again, X is the only thing I'm going to uh, think of as the variable here, okay? So like this is a number like 2X. So to get X by itself, all I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by M. So X would be equal to Y minus B, parentheses, over M, okay? There you go. And that is the answer, all right? Now, you know, of course, it's pretty straightforward the way I do it, but a lot of students get confused with this, and understandably so. So a good way to unconfuse yourself is to substitute in some values, follow the pattern of how you would solve this equation if there were just numbers here, okay? And then follow that procedure, but with, you know, using, you know, obviously the variables because that's what we're working with, an actual problem, okay? Again, Solving for indicated variables or rewriting equations in terms of another variable can get very confusing for a lot of students. And the only way you're going to get good at this is to learn how to solve equations and then just practice this stuff over and over again. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up with this problem. E equals mc squared. So E equals mc squared. 
um, obviously solving for C. Okay, now this one has a little bit of a twist because uh, this is not a linear equation. This is a basic quadratic equation. But if I'm solving for C, uh, and with the variable that I'm solving for, again, is on the right-hand side. Remember, the left is equal to the right, or right is equal to the left. So you can reverse this uh, equation. I personally would do that. Uh, MC squared is equal to E, because we're used to seeing the variable that we're solving for on the left-hand side. Okay? All right. So how do we solve for C? Well, let's make sure you know how to solve for C squared. Okay, so let's just replace some numbers real quick for M and E. Let's say that was 2C squared is equal to 10. All right, that would be like here. Let's just do this. This is MC squared is equal to E, for example. Okay, all right, so if I'm solving for C squared, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation here, for example, by 2. So that would be my M. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation here by M. So that gives me C squared is equal to E over M, okay? So in this case, it would be C squared is equal to 5. So how do I solve for C? Well, if you didn't know, you have to take the square root of both sides. So C is going to equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. But in this case, I just have E over M. No problem. So we're going to take the square root of both sides here. So C is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of E over M. Now, there are some other things we could do. We can kind of spruce this up, rationalize this radical. But if you gave me this answer, I in return would give you an A plus. I would give you multiple stars and probably a happy face. And you would be like, man, I'm awesome in math because I watched that guy's YouTube channel. I knew how to do this problem like one, two, three. Okay. So again, these, uh, Three problems are uh, medium level type of problems. But, you know, if you're learning a skill, you don't want to just jump into like hard problems, right? You want to get the concept down uh, so you understand, you know, one, why we need to do this. And for example, like in a physics uh, class, you know, uh, you might be told, you know, um, uh, find the mass of, of uh, some situation that involves uh, an acceleration and force. Okay, so that means you're going to have to solve for A, or sorry, yeah, solve for M, excuse me, um, given this kind of scenario. This happens all the time, okay? You just think about the formulas that are out there, like rate times time equals distance. That's another basic uh, relationship for like uh, speed and velocity problems, okay? Uh, so this is a common problem. Or, you know, in electronics, you have something called Ohm's Law. Just super, super um, common type of scenarios where you have formulas. And then in math, in K and algebra, you have a lot of equations like this guy here that you just have to know how to rewrite in terms of a particular variable. Okay, so with that being said, um, hopefully, you know, this video found you well. And you're like, oh, thanks for the review. I get this now. I'm, I feel really good about it. So if that's the case, please consider smashing that like button. I would feel really good about that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I'm posting uh, videos all the time. I've been doing so for 10 plus years. Obviously, I'm obsessed with teaching mathematics. I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos organized on my uh, channel or and various playlists, basic to advanced math, but I'm posting new stuff all the time. But if you really want my best health help, uh, go ahead and follow those links in the description of this video. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time. And have a great day.